Well, welcome today to uh, all of our campuses around the world on the internet and those of you at our network churches. Uh, we are in the first week of a series called True-ish. Let's start with a little game of true or false. I'll make a statement at all of our campuses. You guys vote. If you don't vote, you're a big wuss. So you vote true or false. First statement, the Bible is the most shoplifted book in the world. True or false? Those of you who say true, raise your hands. Those of you who say false, false, the answer is true. The Bible is the most shoplifted book in the world. Second statement, a kiss lasting one minute can burn 100 calories. Those of you who say glory to God, that is true, true. Those who say false. False, false. The answer is false. It's actually what happens after <laughs> the kiss that burns the calories. Third statement, a cat has 32 muscles in each ear. Those of you who say true, those of you who say false, the answer is who gives a rip <laughs> how many muscles any cat has in its ear. The title of today's message is a statement, a question actually taken from a conversation that Jesus had with Pontius Pilate when Pilate was trying to determine what to do with Jesus. It's found in John 18, verse 37. The title is, What is Truth? Here's the conversation. You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you're right in saying, I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world. Why did Jesus come? If you could, all of our campus help me out. He said, I came to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of what? Everyone on the side of truth listens to me, and then Pilate asked the question that has been discussed for centuries. Was he sincere? Was he sarcastic? We don't know, but his question was what? His question was, what is truth? The title of this message, what is truth? And the answer to that very important question is so important because it determines so much about our lives. In fact, at the baseline level, if you're taking notes, here's why it's important because what you believe determines how you behave. What you believe to be true determines how you behave relationally. It determines how you behave materially or financially. It determines how you behave morally. And ultimately, it determines how you live spiritually, which will determine what happens to you after this life. What you believe determines how you behave. And not just consciously, but oftentimes, subconsciously, your beliefs will have an impact on your behavior. For example, one time when my oldest son, Sam, came running in, throwing up into his hands with his eyes, and he said, Daddy, Buki is eating his poop. So I ran past Sam, who was throwing up in his hands, and ran into the room where there was little Buki, my second son, with dark stuff all over him, and I threw up, not in my hands, it was like violent vomiting, it went well beyond my hands, and it went everywhere, so Sam's in throw up, I'm in throw up, and so we did the only thing we could do, which was call for mom, <laughs> Amy, and so she came busting in, by all the throw up, and there was Buki with the dark stuff, and she just went up to him and wiped off the smudged Oreo cookie, which was on his face, <laughs> wasn't poop. Zorio cookie, but we believed it was poop, and so it affected us as if it were poop. <laughs> you see, it kind of gross, but it makes a point. What you believe determines how you behave. Why did Jesus come? He came to testify to the truth. But there is one who is, exists totally to oppose the truth. Scripture calls him Satan, or Lucifer, or the angel of light, or the, the great deceiver, or the father of lies. Jesus came to represent truth. He is an enemy who is called the father of lies. John 8, the devil was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the what? Not holding to the, the truth, because there's no what in him? There's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar, and he's called the what? He's called the 
the father of lies. Jesus came to testify to the truth. Satan came as the father of lies. Now, Satan is very cunning. He's, he's, uh, he's sly. He's not going to tell you a lie that is so outlandish that you're going to look at it and go, you know, that's just stupid. There's no way that's true. He is, he is the counterfeiter. He's going to give you something that looks true, feels true, something that I would call true-ish. Because if he gave you some outlandish lie, you're going to be smart enough to go, well, that's just totally stupid. That's obviously not true. He's going to give you something that looks true, feels true, sounds true, because he knows if he can take you just even the slightest bit off of truth over a lifetime, as you're traveling through life, one day you're going to wake up very, very far from truth, which is, I believe, what he's doing today. He wants you to exchange the truth of God for a lie. And you can see the result of this in Romans chapter 1. We'll look at a few different verses, verses 18, 22, and 25. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who do what? Of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Although they claim to be wise, which is what's happening today, isn't it? You know, we're enlightened, you know, we know more than our parents, you know, uh, life's different today. Although they claim to be wise, Scripture says they became what? Say it aloud. They became fools. What did they do? They exchanged the truth of God for a what? They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. True-ish. Sounds true, looks true, feels true, but it is actually a lie. Let me just tell you this. What we're going to talk about in the next few weeks, I believe is truly one of the greatest problems that our generation faces, and the messages that I speak, I believe, will be some of the most prophetic into one of the most dangerous and false belief systems of this generation. Our spiritual enemy, Satan, is the father of lies. He's got two great weapons that he's using today. If you're taking notes, the first is the weapon of relativism. Relativism. And the second is the weapon of subjective, subjective, subjectivism. Subjectivism. Relativism and subjectivism. If you're taking notes, what is relativism? Relativism is the assumption that there is no such thing as absolute truth, right? No such thing as absolute truth. Truth is evolving. Truth is not constant. What used to be true is no, no longer true today. For example, I was having a conversation with a very bright uh, Christian kid from our church, and we were just talking, and he said, I've got this friend who's a lesbian, and then he stopped, and he said, now, I know that when you were a kid, homosexuality was wrong, but we all know that today homosexuality is not wrong, okay? Now, the point of this illustration is not to make a case for or against homosexuality as much as it is to show that here is the belief of a very strong Christian kid that what used to be wrong years ago is no longer wrong today because in this generation's mindset, truth is not constant, it evolves. My parents would say there is absolute truth. Most of the kids, my kids' age, would say there's no such thing because this is the mindset by which they've been raised. Now, we studied this in seminary, excuse me. When I was in seminary, we, we studied kind of the one who coined this in the best way. He was a 19th century German philosopher by the name of Hegel. And he is now known for what's called the Hegelian dialectic. And what it is is this. He taught that there's, whenever there's a thesis that meets an antithesis, whenever a truth collides with an opposing truth, there is a synthesis. The result is truth meets the oppositional thought equals a new truth or an evolving truth because truth is not constant. There's the thesis, collides with the antithesis, equals the synthesis, there's a new truth. Uh, for example, uh, how many of you were alive in the 50s? 1950s, raise your hands high. In the 50s, would you agree that marriage was kind of a sacred institution? 50s, you'd say, say so. If you got divorced in the 50s, it's kind of like, oh, you know, you just, you just didn't do that because marriage was holy. Now, how many of you were around in the 60s? In the 60s, you don't remember the 60s because in the 60s, almost everybody was stoned, right? 
And in the 60s, it was free sex, and you have to be married. And so the 50s, you've got marriage is important. You've got 60s, sex is important, doesn't matter about marriage. And those collide and evolve into the new, new truth today, which is, hey, marriage doesn't really matter. I mean, you, you can get married, but if you're not happy, you don't stay married. And why bother getting married anyway? You might as well just live together. Because truth is not constant, it evolves. It's, it's relativism. Are we tracking? If you're tracking, raise your hand. I gotta see if you're, you're with me. I'll, okay, okay. Let's talk about the next one, subjectivism. What, what is subjectivism? It's the belief that I, the subject, have the right to determine what is right and wrong without submitting my judgment to any authority outside myself. Subjectivism. I, uh, since there is no absolute truth, you can't impose your beliefs on me. I am the source of truth. I'll determine if my actions are right or wrong based on how I, how I feel. Subjectivism leads me to these beliefs. Well, if it feels good, it must be true. As long as it makes me happy, that's all that matters. As long as I'm sincere, it doesn't matter what I believe. As long as it doesn't hurt anyone, it doesn't matter what I do. Those statements and those beliefs are absolutely and completely true-ish. They feel right, sound right. It, 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 it's, it, it seems so appealing. But when I believe those false beliefs, those false beliefs determine how I behave, and if I can take just a minor step away from truth, I can wake up years later very, very far from truth. Great weapons of our spiritual enemy today. There is no truth, and since there is no truth, I'm gonna determine what is right for me. True-ish.